I welcome you uh, and bring you greetings and regards from the Mahatma Gandhi Medical College Hospital in Jaipur. Uh, my name is VK Kapoor. I am a professor of uh, hepatopancreatobiliary surgery at the Mahatma Gandhi Medical College Hospital. Today we are going to talk about incidental gallbladder cancer. First, we should be clear about the nomenclature. In the literature, there is a lot of confusion about various terms used in relation to gallbladder cancer. What we proposed and suggested from the SGPGIMS Lucknow, where I worked earlier for more than three decades, was that if a diagnosis of gallbladder cancer is made on clinical grounds, that is based on history and examination findings, then it should be called obvious gallbladder cancer. On the other hand, if the clinical picture is like gallstone disease, but imaging, either ultrasound and or CT or MRI, raises a suspicion, then it should be called a suspected gallbladder cancer. Next, if even imaging findings are suggestive of gallstone disease only and the patient is taken up for a simple cholecystectomy for gallstone disease, but either during the operation or in the specimen there is any suspicion, then we propose that it should be called unsuspected gallbladder cancer. And a true incidental gallbladder cancer is where up to this stage, that means up to the gross examination of the gallbladder specimen which has been removed with a clinical and imaging diagnosis of gallstone disease, there is no suspicion of gallbladder cancer and it is only on histopathology of the gallbladder specimen that a malignancy is detected, it should be called a true incidental gallbladder cancer. So that is what we are going to talk about today. Why is it important to know about incidental gallbladder cancer? And that is because there may be residual disease. Residual disease mainly in the lymph nodes. And this risk of residual disease in the lymph nodes increases as the T stage of the primary tumor increases starting from less than 5% in T1A disease, which is confined to the uh, mucosa, and going up to more than 75% when the disease has gone beyond the gallbladder or involved adjacent organs. And a large series of incidental gallbladder cancer from South America showed that majority of the patients with incidental gallbladder cancer were either T1B, T2, or T3. And in fact, a group from US has even described a residual disease score where based on T stage, the differentiation of the tumor, the presence or absence of lymphovascular and perineural invasion, you can say that what are the chances of residual disease being present after a simple cholecystectomy with a presumed diagnosis of gallstone disease. When we talk of early gallbladder cancer, which is T1, including both A and B, that is involvement of the mucosa and the muscularis propria, uh, there are conflicting reports. Reports from South America uh, show that even with simple cholecystectomy, uh, which was done in all 371 patients except 11, a five-year survival of 86 and 87 percent was achieved. And this report, they recommended that for T1 disease, incidental gallbladder cancer, uh, no further surgery is required and simple cholecystectomy is good enough. Another review of 29 publications where simple choli was done in as many as 590 out of 706, but all T1A disease showed 100% five-year survival. And there is another report from uh, uh, multi, multiple countries where even in T1B disease, uh, including 237 patients, it was shown that survival was equally good whether it was a simple or an extended cholecystectomy. So there are several reports which suggest that both for T1A and T1B disease, uh, simple cholecystectomy is as good as an extended or a radical cholecystectomy. But there are contradictory reports also, especially for T1B disease, which is involvement of the muscularis propria. And this report from Korea showed that when 85 patients who had T1B disease and 54 were analyzed, they found that recurrence rates were higher when a simple cholecystectomy alone was done 
and this resulted in a poorer five-year survival as compared to when extended cholecystectomy is done. And there are several other reports which recommend that because five-year survival after simple cholecystectomy in T1B disease is poor, uh, extended cholecystectomy or radical cholecystectomy is recommended. And many years ago, we had also shown that almost half of the patients who underwent a simple cholecystectomy with a T1B disease had recurrence, thus recommending an extended or radical cholecystectomy for T1B disease. As far as T2 disease is concerned, when the tumor has gone beyond the muscularis propria into the perimuscular or sub serosal connective tissue, there is no debate and everybody all over the world agrees that there is a definite advantage of reoperation and it should be recommended in all cases with T2 incidental gallbladder cancer. Recently, T2 gallbladder cancer has been subdivided into T2H and T2P based on whether the tumor is on the hepatic side of the gallbladder or on the peritoneal side. And this retrospective analysis showed that when the disease is more towards the liver, then uh, presence of vascular and neural invasion is more, lymph nodes are more frequently involved, recurrences are more, and therefore, five-year, three-year and five-year survivals were lower as compared to when the same disease, T2 disease, is on the peritoneal side of the gallbladder. So based on this subdivision of T2 stage, there are some reports which suggest that if the disease is on the peritoneal side, then whether you remove a part of the liver or not in a radical cholecystectomy, it doesn't make much difference and lymphadenectomy alone is recommended without any liver wedge excision. And there are other reports which also suggest that in T2A peritoneal disease, and one report actually goes on to say that in any T2 disease, a liver resection is not required or not recommended. But I personally do not agree because uh, uh, early gallbladder cancer is potentially curable gallbladder cancer and we should not compromise on the extent of resection. And I strongly recommend and uh, propose that irrespective of whether it is peritoneal or hepatic site for T2 disease and in fact even for T1B disease, a classical conventional extended or radical cholecystectomy which includes liver wedge should be performed. As far as more advanced that is T3 disease where the disease has gone beyond the serosa into the liver parenchyma, uh, uh, the same group earlier said that there is no advantage of reoperation. But in a later publication, this is the pool data from German Cancer Registry, they said that there could be an advantage of reoperation. And therefore, if there is no contraindication for reoperation in the form of distant metastasis, then I think the benefit of doubt of reoperation should be given to patients even with T3 disease, although many of them may not benefit from it. So once a patient with a diagnosis of incidental gallbladder cancer uh, comes to us uh, for a review and opinion, we should go back into the operative details, especially whether there was bile spill during index cholecystectomy, what port of extraction was used and whether a bag was used for extracting the gallbladder or not, because this uh, affects the risk of port site and peritoneal dissemination. Then we should look at the site of the tumor more importantly, whether the tumor was at the neck of the gallbladder, and as we already discussed, that if it is T2 disease, whether it was on the peritoneal or hepatic site, and the gross type, papillary type of tumor, because these tumors can be multicentric and they can also have intraductal embolic spread. Of course, the histological details, that is T, if the cystic node was there in the specimen, the nodal status, cystic duct margin, differentiation, lymphovascular, perineural, and pericapsular invasion, which indicate the biology of the disease. And a thorough clinical examination to look for any obvious metastasis, because in gallbladder cancer, if any distant metastasis is present, then definitely there is no point of operating upon this patient, whether in the primary setting or in the setting of incidental gallbladder cancer. The investigations again are targeted towards finding out or ruling out a distant metastasis. So an ultrasound of the abdomen and a chest x-ray as the preliminary screening investigation. 
and if they don't show anything, then a CT of the abdomen and chest and pelvis. Uh, more and more reports are coming in that there is definitely a role of PET scan, more so if the T stage was advanced or if there is a long gap between the index cholecystectomy and the reoperation. And like in primary gallbladder cancer, all patients with incidental gallbladder cancer should have a staging laparoscopy which will detect small surface peritoneal deposits which obviously are not picked up on any cross-sectional imaging. PET scan is also important because there is a recent report, although it's not very well established uh, standard of care, that in PT1B disease, that is up to the muscularis propria, if the PET is negative after cholecystectomy, it means that there is no residual disease and these patients may not be reoperated and may be kept under close surveillance, although again personally I do not agree with this. I feel that this is a potentially curable stage of gallbladder cancer and all patients should be advised reoperation. So what is done if no metastases are found uh, for an incidental gallbladder cancer? The procedure is what we call a completion extended cholecystectomy because a simple cholecystectomy has already been done. We are just completing the radicality. Uh, there is a lot of debate about when this reoperation should be done how much of the liver, whether only a simple wedge, 2 cm, or a formal 4B and 5. The extent of lymphadenectomy is same as in a primary extended cholecystectomy, which is the entire hepatodudinal ligament from the porta hepatis to the superior border of the first part of duodenum, complete cockerization of the duodenum and head of the pancreas, and all retropancreatic, retroduodenal nodes, and then nodes along the uh, uh, common hepatic artery to the right of the celiac axis. There are a lot of debatable and controversial issues about excision of CBD and whether port sites should be excised and if yes, whether all ports or only the port of extraction. As far as when is concerned, again this retrospective analysis of a 10 institution consortium where uh, 207 patients who underwent completion extended cholecystectomy were analyzed it was found that the best outcome in terms of median survival was seen in patients who were operated in the intermediate period, four weeks to eight weeks after the incidental cholecystectomy. Patients who were operated earlier also had poorer survival and patients who had a delayed reoperation also had poor survival. Delayed is understood, but why there is poor survival in earlier? That is because we haven't given the disease enough time to show its biology and if four weeks are given and the disease is aggressive, it will show in the form of a PET scan positivity. Also, as expected, they showed poor survival in relation to T and N stage and if it was an R2 resection, which means the disease had gone beyond the gallbladder. How much of the liver? Uh, as I said, whether wedge or 4B and 5, this report from Germany suggested that for T1B lesion, wedge is good enough, but for T2, they recommended 4B and 5. But a comparison between the two procedures from a Japanese uh, uh, consortium showed that there was no difference in three-year survival. And again, another recent publication showed that uh, between the two procedures, uh, as long as uh, R0 resection could be achieved. So this was in T2 disease where there is no liver infiltration. It did not make any difference whether a liver wedge or 4B and 5 resection is done. Lymphadenectomy, as I said, is same as in primary gallbladder cancer. So if I were to summarize the management of incidental gallbladder cancer, I would say that if it is a T1A disease confined to mucosa, cystic node is negative, cystic duct margin is free and there was no bile spill, then simple cholecystectomy alone with a close follow-up. But if the disease is beyond T1A, that is T1B or more, if the node is positive, if the cyst then a completion extended cholecystectomy is required. I have put a question mark here because as I mentioned earlier, some reports say that for T1B disease, uh, Completion extended cholecystectomy is not required. Simple cholecystectomy is good enough, although personally I am in favor of a completion extended cholecystectomy. If the cystic duct margin is positive, 
irrespective of T or N stage, a re-operation is required because then we need to do a CBD excision. If it is a lap coli, as it is in most cases today, then as I said, uh, port side excision is a debatable controversial issue. Without going into the details, more and more evidence is emerging that it is not required for therapeutic intent, but it may be a good staging or diagnostic procedure because if the port site is positive, then the prognosis is bad and it indicates addition of chemotherapy. Similarly, if there was bile spill during the index cholecystectomy, chemotherapy should be added even if it is not otherwise indicated. And if it is a papillary tumor, which is more likely to have a multicentric origin or intraductal tumor embolic spread, then some people recommend CBD excision while others say that you should add chemotherapy. So that is the summary of uh, management of incidental gallbladder cancer. I have dealt with more issues related to gallbladder cancer in this pictorial treatise which has been published by Springer and I invite all of you to the second Jaipur Surgical Festival with the theme of HPB Oncology which will be held from 2nd to 4th December uh, 2022. Thank you very much.